why Argentina may go through an oil boom. First, I will explain you this, and then we will talk about four Argentine stocks to gain exposure to it. You see, Argentina is currently passing through a lot of changes. After decades of recession and crazy money printing, Argentina is finally making some adjustments that may change completely its economy and its future. And Argentina is a pretty rich country in terms of natural resources. But in terms of energy, in terms of oil and gas, Argentina was never a big global player. Until 2010, when a huge oil reserve was discovered in this region. And when I say it's huge, I mean it. It is located in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere, in a pretty much arid place, and its name is Vaca Muerta, which in English means dead cow. Because, well, if you leave a cow in the middle of the desert, uh, it will die. But just to give you an idea, while the US has 48 billion barrels of total oil reserves, Argentina's Vaca Muerta alone holds 16 billion barrels. That's a staggering 33% of the total US reserves. Absolutely massive. But it's not just oil that you will find in Vaca Muerta. It is also home to the second largest unconventional gas reserves in the world. And if you're wondering what unconventional means, don't worry, I will explain you in a second. But for now, Here's a crazy comparison. While the US has 691 trillion cubic feet of natural gas reserves, Vaca Muerta alone holds 308 trillion. That's 44% of the total US gas reserves. Huge, right? But Vaca Muerta isn't just huge, it is also a high quality reserve, as we will see soon. But first, why is Vaca Muerta called an unconventional reserve? It's because they use a method called fracking. You see, in regular reserves, oil is found in big pockets that are easy to drill. But in Vaca Muerta, the oil and gas are stuck very deep in the soil, in tiny cracks and holes in the rock. Fracking drills deep into the ground and uses hydraulic pressure to cause cracks in the rock, which lets the oil and gas come out so they can be collected. And that's how shale oil and gas are extracted. But as I mentioned earlier, Vaca Muerta isn't just massive, it is also top quality. But take a look at this table to see what I mean. And hold on, I know this seems super boring, but I will break it down for you. The key here is simple, the more blue you see, the better. So, in terms of total organic content, Vaca Muerta has some of the highest scores similar to the Delaware Basin, which is a super productive reserve in Texas and New Mexico that's considered one of the most efficient shale reserves in the world. For thickness, Vaca Muerta also stands out as excellent. And this is important because the thicker the rock, the better, as it can hold more oil or gas. Now, when it comes to depth, we can see that Vaca Muerta is about average, since it's a very deep reserve. And why does that matter? Because the shallower the reserve, the less drilling is needed to reach it, making it more economical. Additionally, as we can see here on this map, and again, the more blue you see, the better, but additionally, Vaca Muerta is one of the cleanest oil and gas reserves in the world, with very low carbon emissions when compared to most countries. So, in summary, Vaca Muerta is a massive and high quality reserve. Now, before we talk about the Argentine stocks that are exposed to Vaca Muerta, it's important to understand that Vaca Muerta is a geopolitically important reserve. You've probably heard about nearshoring. Nearshoring is the trend of Western companies bringing their supply chains and assembly lines closer to home. So, instead of making phones or computers in places like China, India or Taiwan, they are now shifting production to nearby countries like Mexico. Why? Well, because the world is getting less stable. We are going through a major deglobalization process. Before, the US was the dominant global power. Now, on the other hand, other players like Russia and China are challenging that. And with the risks of war rising, it's safer to keep things close to home. 
That way, if conflict breaks out, supply chains wouldn't be completely disrupted. And the same goes for energy. Look at Germany, for example. They relied too much on Russian gas and didn't diversify their energy sources. Now, with the war, Germany is in trouble because Putin can easily cut off their gas supply, leaving them without power. And that's why it's so important to have other energy sources and not to depend too much on places like the Middle East, for example. And this is where Vaca Muerta comes in. You see, Argentina has been aligning with Western democracies and is in South America, with relatively easy access to Europe and the US without crossing hostile countries. The problem is that Vaca Muerta still has a long way to go to reach its full potential. Argentina faces major infrastructure challenges, and significant investment is needed to turn the country into a top exporter. You see, for decades, Argentina's market has been stuck, but with Millet's recent reforms, things are starting to change drastically. And as regulations are removed and foreign capital flows in, we will likely see the private sector develop this infrastructure in the coming decades. But anyway, expectations for Vaca Muerta are very positive. As we can see here in this chart, oil production is expected to double by 2032, while natural gas production could grow by 1.2 times. The thing is that this projection was made in the end of 2022, before the structural reforms we are currently seeing. So, with Argentina making progress, we might get surprised. Now, let's talk about how to gain exposure to Vaca Muerta through four Argentine stocks. We will start with the one with the least exposure and work our way up to the one with the most. But before we dive in, if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to leave your like and I also invite you to subscribe. And just a quick reminder, nothing in this video or in this channel is investment advice, okay? But in fourth place, we have Pampa Energia, ticker PAM. Pampa Energia is a holding company with a market cap of about $5 billion, which operates widely and diversely in the Argentine energy sector. As we can see here, 56% of Pampa Energia's results come from oil and gas exploration and production, while 44% comes from energy generation and transmission. It holds 15% of the Argentine energy generation market, which makes it one of the largest players in the country. And additionally, its energy production matrix is well diversified, with hydroelectric, wind and thermal power plants. Besides, Pampa Energia also owns 26% of Transener, which is the largest energy transmission network in Argentina connecting the country from north to south. In addition, Pampa Energia also owns around 25% of TGS, Transportadora de Gas del Sur, which is the backbone of gas transmission in Argentina, as we can see here in this map. TGS is actually a key player in the distribution of the gas coming from Vaca Muerta. And lastly, Pampa Energia holds about 14% of the market share in unconventional gas, most of which is related to Vaca Muerta. And I've actually talked to the company, and as far as I've understood, Vaca Muerta is an important growth avenue for them. So, in summary, Pampa Energia is a stock that gives you exposure to Vaca Muerta, but it's more than that. Because by investing in Pampa, you are also betting on Argentina's overall energy market, including gas distribution and power transmission. It's not just a Vaca Muerta play, it's a broader bet on the country's growth. In third place, we have the largest pipeline operator in Latin America, which is TGS, Transportadora de Gas del Sur. Its shares are traded in the US under the ticker TGS, and we actually just talked about it because TGS is partially owned by Pump Energia. Anyway, TGS operates over 9,000 kilometers of pipelines, representing 60% of Argentina's natural gas transport capacity. Founded in 1992, TGS operates in the midstream segment, providing natural gas transportation, processing and storage services. And though this company doesn't produce gas, TGS has a significant exposure to Vaca Muerta, where it has been investing heavily to expand its pipeline infrastructure. Additionally, TGS also operates in the telecommunications segment through Talcosur, its business division that provides fiber optic infrastructure and data services, focused 
focused on Southern Argentina. So in summary, TGS is a key company for Argentina with a service focused business that will undoubtedly benefit greatly from an energy boom in Vaca Muerta. In second place, we have one of the largest companies in Argentina with nearly 100 years of history. It has a market cap of $17 billion, is controlled by the government and its name is YPF. In the past, YPF was heavily impacted by government policies, which used the company as a tool to contain inflation. But with the radical change we are currently seeing in Argentina, I don't think this will be the case anymore. In fact, if the reforms continue, we might even see this company fully privatized, which would certainly increase its efficiency. But as we can see here, YPF produces 33% of all the energy in Argentina, it is responsible for 37% of the country's oil production and for 29% of Argentina's natural gas production. YPF, however, is not a major energy exporter, at least not yet. As we can see here, only this portion of the company's revenue comes from exports. However, with the loosening of regulations and expansion of the pipelines, we may see this changing. In fact, this is a common point for all Argentine companies. Exports are still not very significant. But for example, 95% of the entire YPF's oil production goes to the domestic market, while only 5% is exported. As for natural gas, only 4% is exported. But again, with the development of the oil and gas infrastructure in Argentina, this situation could change completely. Now, besides producing energy, YPF also sells 57% of all the fuel in the country. So, as you can see, YPF is a key company for Argentina. In addition, YPF also has a significant exposure to Vaca Muerta, being one of the main companies in the region. As we can see here, its shale gas gas and oil production has been increasing exponentially since 2019. Production has grown about four times. And YPF has been investing heavily in production. Look here, the amount of investment going into the upstream segment of the business. And in case you don't know what upstream means, well, upstream is the part of energy exploration and production, while downstream would be distribution and sales. So it's in the production area that YPF is focused focusing most of its investments. And according to the company, they are only in the early stages of developing the Vaca Muerta reserve. So, in summary, though YPF is heavily involved in Vaca Muerta, it has a more diversified business, covering exploration, production, transportation, refining and distribution. But for example, uh, YPF is much more focused on fossil fuels than pump energia. Anyway, let's go to our first place. Now, before we talk about our top pick for Vaca Muerta exposure, if you're into stock research, check out Seeking Alpha. It's the research platform I use, and here I can find articles about the stocks I'm studying, along with conference call transcripts and all the financial data. Anyway, I will leave a link in this video's description with a 10% discount and a one-week free trial. Have fun! Finally, our first place belongs to a stock, belongs to a company that is fully focused on oil and natural gas exploration and production in Vaca Muerta. Founded in 2017 and headquartered in Mexico, its name is Vista Energy, ticker VIST. As we can see here, Vista Energy is the second largest shale oil producer in Vaca Muerta, and in fact, almost all the company's assets are located there. And that's why Vista Energy got the first place, because it is the most focused player in Vaca Muerta. Vista Energy has reserves expected to last for about 12 years, and as shown here, production is expected to double between 2023 and 2025. Now, the question is, is it time to buy any of these stocks? Because as we can see here, these stocks have already gone up a lot. I mean, in the last 12 months, uh, YPF, for example, went up by... 131.9%. Uh, Vista Energy, on the other hand, went up by 66%. Uh, now, of course, even after such a big rise, a stock can still be undervalued. But since I haven't had the time 
to dive into their financials and do a proper valuation. I can't say for sure if these stocks are indeed good investments with more upside ahead. That's why for now I will just keep these stocks on my watch list as potential future opportunities. Even because it's probably a good idea to wait for a correction before jumping in. With that said, as we saw in this video, Argentina is already showing signs of improvement. And if the country keeps progressing, Vaca Muerta will probably thrive and these companies will probably benefit from it. Anyway, that's it for today, hope you've enjoyed this video and see you next time.